If you're considering an investment on the Arrived Homes platform, you need to understand what you're getting into. I've invested in several of these online real estate platforms over the years, and I'm about 10 months into experimenting with the Arrived Homes platform, and I'm sharing my results publicly here and on my website. In this video, I'll explain the experiment and screen share my account to help investors determine if it's an appropriate investment platform for their objectives. After we look inside my account, I'll talk about some of the risks and criticisms and answer some common questions about the Arrived Homes platform. Okay, here's how the experiment is set up. I set aside $2,000 for investment in April 2023, then deployed those funds gradually into individual properties that became available. I invested between $100 and $300 into single-family homes and vacation rentals. My selection criteria was kind of loose because there wasn't a ton of inventory, but I selected properties mostly based on location. For available properties, I used Google Maps to pinpoint the address and Street View to actually check out the neighborhoods. Sometimes I found properties that were kind of far from schools or shopping areas, and they just didn't seem like nice places to live, so I didn't buy those. Generally, if I could see myself living there with good locations, nice neighborhoods, I'd buy. Same thing with vacation rentals. If I'd stay there myself and it was near something interesting, I'd buy it. Once I deployed all $2,000, I paused to see how these initial investments would perform, pay their dividends, and update the property values. The plan was to pause there for at least a year. But in early December 2023, Arrived launched the Single Family Residential Fund, which is a fund of multiple properties that help investors diversify and add some liquidity, which when you buy individual properties, you don't get that. The Single Family Residential Fund is a great addition to Arrived that addresses some of the former shortcomings. So I invested $500 in the Single Family Residential Fund when it went live, for a total Arrived investment of $2,500. All right, we're inside my Arrived account now. That's me, Craig S. When you log in, you come to this first screen which shows all the available investments or recent investments that were available on the platform. Right now, inventory is a little bit thin. You see you have this single family residential fund I talked about, which is available all the time. They're always adding new properties to it and new investors are welcome to invest. You also have these single family residential individual properties now they have these silly names like the Van Zant and the Northridge and the Ross, but you can see you know where the property is. There's some pictures and the number of investors and whether or not it's funded. These single family properties, if there's availability, the bar will be not all the way across. It'll show a certain percentage funded. Typically when a new property is released, they email and text investors to let you know. You go on the onto the platform and you can do your due diligence and invest. There's usually plenty of time from when the properties are released to when they're sold out. So across the top here, you have the single family, we have the vacation rentals. These come out less frequently than the than the single family home properties. They're a little bit more risk to them because you know these things don't have like a stable rent or stable tenant. They have to put these on Airbnb and rent them out to, to users for you know, a shorter period of time. They're short-term rentals. There's the single family fund. Right now, it's the single family residential fund, but I was in a webinar and they talked about possibly having a vacation fund in the future. So we'll look forward to that. Then there's these short term notes. This is a, a new product that I'm not going to talk about too much today, but they're essentially offering two to three percent more uh, than treasuries to put your money into short term funds. So we're just going to click into the single family residential fund here. And you can see there are 17 properties, $6.5 million so far invested and 7,000 investors. I'm one of these investors. And when I started, there was only eight properties in this fund, but now it's up to 17. This is a, a popular offering, I think, because there's more liquidity, more diversity with just one purchase. You can own 17 properties versus buying individual properties one at a time. I'm back to the main page and now I'm going to look at my account. So here's my portfolio. You can see the balance has come down a little bit from that $2,500. There's been some appreciation returns that have been negative. When I bought them, they were worth more. They're worth less now. Platform accounts for that. You can see the total rental income that I've received. I've had two dividend payouts from my portfolio so far. And right now the long-term occupancy rate is 100%. I own eight single family properties and right now they're all occupied. Let's talk about this wallet. This is a new feature with Arrived. It's convenient for dividend reinvestment because when you get a dividend, it deposits into your wallet. And from there, you can either kick it out to your bank account or reinvest into a new property. My cash level is only at about $15 right now, so I can't make a new investment into a new property. I looked into this wallet a little bit. It says here the idea is to pay dividends directly into an Arrived account, and they've unlocked the ability to pay monthly dividends instead of quarterly, which is going to be cool going forward. And if we scroll down here, uh, you can see that is your money safe? Yeah, 
Money's held in a Wells Fargo account and it is FDIC insured. So this wallet's pretty solid. Once the money's there, you can reinvest it or throw it out to your bank account either way. So we're back to my portfolio. I'm going to look a little bit more at property details. Now I want to point out that the information in this table I'm copying and putting on my website. So here it is today, but I'm going to be updating this quarterly. There's a link in the description to where that is where you can check on the progress of this portfolio. If you like this video and, and seeing these results, let me know. I can make a quarterly update or every six months to show you progress inside my account. All right, so your investments, there's the eight single family homes. There's the amount of time owned and the equity in each one. I just went through my first round of valuation changes. And you can see a few of my properties have gone down in value, especially this, Avon, uh, this Avondale. Uh, some of them have gone up a little bit and you can see the appreciation depreciation here. So I've lost a little money there. I'm not real worried about month to month changes in the price of these properties. They're occupied. They pay me quarterly dividends. So I'm not too concerned about updates to valuations in the short term. Now I can scroll across here. It shows the various payments, uh, the most recent payments, the total payments and the annualized yield. You can compare an annualized yield to a stock dividend. Essentially, it's the yield on your investments. My $100 investment in a property should pay me about $4.20 a year. And as the rental status, the lease date, and the monthly rent, the forecast number is from when I purchased the property. It, it tries to give you an estimated value of what the rent's gonna be. Whenever they sign the lease, we find out what the true rent is, and then it tells you the difference here. For most, they've been under-promising and over-delivering. I have one here that came in $25 below forecast. So as long as there's a lease in place and the rent is being paid, there shouldn't be any issues. Of course, tenants go sour and things start to go wrong. I haven't seen any issues where a tenant stops paying rent yet but I'll be watching for that. And when that happens, we'll see how it updates here. I assume it'll say delinquent or something like that. I'm gonna to go to my vacation rentals now. I have six of them. You can see how long I've owned them. The prices have not changed. The values haven't changed. I actually think these are going to go down in value because COVID led to this big push in property values for vacation rentals and Airbnbs. So we'll see what happens to the values of these properties over time. All right, going across here, we have the shares is the same. You buy 10 shares is worth a hundred bucks. But since we don't have stable tenants in these properties, the revenue is irregular. It may be seasonal depending on where these properties are. And there may be long-term vacancies if people aren't booking these Airbnbs. What's really cool is you can click the links on the right side here and go check out the Airbnb listings. This property is in the Catskills of New York. Pretty nice looking vacation property. 139 bucks a night. You can actually check availability to see how far out it's booked kind of monitor your investment. Another thing is it arrived encourages people who own these properties to go visit them and to go stay in them. There's one more view here, the single family fund. This one's not that interesting. It just has the number of properties, the equity. This one will be interesting to see how it progresses with the number of properties and when they start actually paying dividends on these funds. What I learned from the webinar is that any property that's in the single family fund is not available to arrived investors as an individual holding. So there's no overlap between the individual properties available and the funds. They're going to be separate. I'd really like to see a vacation rental property fund as well, but it seems like the vacation rentals are coming up less frequently. So over time, I think as this platform grows and matures, they're going to be adding more options. There may be a second single family fund, or they may have more stuff in the works that we haven't seen yet. This company has a lot up its sleeves with the, the wallet and the short-term investments in the funds. So we'll see what happens as Arrived grows and matures and, and earns more customers. Before I talk more about the Arrived platform, I just wanna point out that I've written a very extensive review on my website, retiredbeforedad.com. There's a link in the description. The review is a much deeper dive than everything I've talked about in the video today. There's also a link to my Arrived Homes return page where I share the details of my personal account. You go to that page and there's a table with my active investments. I update this about every quarter so you can see the latest results of my portfolio. Signing up to browse properties is free. There's a link in the description to learn more. That link and the links on my website are affiliate links, meaning if you use one to sign up, I'll receive a commission. Okay, so we've talked about my experiment. We've looked inside my account, but how does Arrived Homes work? Arrived uses crowdfunding laws to raise funds and buy properties to qualify with the SEC. There's all kinds of ways to use crowdfunding to invest. Real estate is a popular use case, but companies can also use crowdfunding 
to give equity to customers. In fact, Arrived is doing that with a WeFunder campaign right now. Real estate crowdfunding isn't new, and crowdfunding has been happening since 2012, and many of these companies are even dropping the crowdfunding moniker. Now, once Arrived finds and purchases a property, they qualify it with the SEC. Now, this can be a lengthy process, but allows them to offer investments to non-accredited investors. Once qualified, they list it on the platform and allow investors to invest. From there, they create a separate LLC for each property. The individual investors become the LLC owners. Arrive manages the LLC, pays dividends to investors, but they hire a property management company to deal with all the tenants and the vacation rental property issues. Outsourcing the property management is what makes this business scalable. If you've read reviews or watched other videos on YouTube about Arrived Homes, you will find some skepticism about the platform due to fees or liquidity issues or billionaire investor involvement. Investors should be skeptical of relatively new investment platforms like this. Arrived is a venture-backed startup and its future is uncertain. I'm not even all in here. I'm testing the waters. If the platform continues to thrive and grow, there will always be opportunities to invest in new properties. Speaking of billionaire investors, Arrived boasts a very impressive list of angel investors, including Mark Benioff of Salesforce, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, Spencer Raskoff of Zillow, and Dara Khosro Shahi, the CEO of Uber. Now, they're not buying these single family homes, they're investing in Arrived itself. Now, the media and some politicians don't like this trend of institutional investors owning single family homes. And with Arrived, it's individual investors like you and me who are looking to profit, just like landlords or institutional investors who are buying up thousands of properties. I do think this platform has legs. Customers seem to really like it. I think over 4,000 customers have signed up via the WeFunder campaign to invest in the company at a $100 million valuation. If customers like the platform and are willing to invest, I think that's a good sign for long-term viability. One of the main criticisms I've seen about Arrived is the fees. For a business like this to thrive, they need to charge enough money to operate and grow and eventually earn a profit. They're probably operating at a loss now, but as they scale, costs should stabilize, and if they can get enough properties onto the platform, they have a pretty good chance of surviving. But to do that, they need to charge the appropriate fees. Easy access to assets like this come at a cost. Investors either have to accept the costs or not invest. The alternative is to save up thousands of dollars, get a mortgage, and put all of your money into one rental property. Of course, that takes a lot more effort, with crowdfunding, you can do it from your computer, you can start with $100, and it's easy to diversify from the very beginning. So when you're looking at any online platform and analyzing the fees, think of these as convenience fees that make it possible for you to invest from your computer instead of going out and doing all the legwork. And of course, work the fees into your analysis when you're choosing your properties. Another thing to think about is broader real estate market risks. If property values tank like they did in 2009, 2010, you're going to lose money on arrived homes, at least in the very short term. Arrived properties have a five to seven year investment horizon. So don't buy properties unless you're willing to hold on for that long. If your investment horizon is shorter than that, go with the single family residential fund. I expect there to be more liquidity options for the individual properties in the future, but for now, just stick with the fund or expect to hold for five to seven years. Another complaint I've seen about arrived is inventory. When new platforms emerge and grow, they need to balance their inventory with their customers. Too many properties and you won't have enough buyers. Too many customers and they're gonna gobble up the properties too fast. So as Arrived scales and grows their customer base, this is always going to be an issue, especially when they're trying to maintain an investment standard for their properties. What you don't want is these companies to just buy more properties to fill the demand, but lower their investment standards and buy lower quality properties. The single family residential fund helps to alleviate the supply and demand imbalances by just being available all the time. So if you're new to the platform, I suggest starting with a single family residential fund. Test out the platform, see how you like it, and then if you wanna move on to individual properties, then you can do that. 10 months into my Arrived Homes experiment, overall I'm pleased with how my investments have performed. I really like the user experience and Arrived is very transparent. The communication is frequent, they provide a lot of updates on the properties, and they give quarterly updates on the company performance. They have these frequent webinars where you can go online and learn about new products and ask questions to the company leadership. It's pretty cool. Yes, there are fees, there are certainly risks, and Arrived is a relatively new platform. But as someone who's invested on several of these online real estate platforms, I'm cautiously positive on what the future holds for Arrived Homes. However, as the company scales, 
They need to show that this is a sustainable business model, especially when the next real estate downturn happens. Well, that's all for this video. Be sure to check out my arrived homes review and returns pages on my website. While you're there, subscribe to my free newsletter where I email my latest blog posts about personal finance and DIY investing. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. I'm Craig from Retire Before Dad. Thanks for watching.